Excuse me, Philip? Philip? Hmm? I I'm sorry. Is everything all right? I was just thinking about my brother. Uh, what is it? Aliena is ready to go to Shiring with you. Then I must not keep her waiting. As we rode, Aliena expressed relief that Percy Hamley held court in Shiring Town during the Fleece Fair, and not in her father's castle. I had not yet confessed to Aliena that I blamed myself for her father's fate. I felt the guilt and shame starting to rise when we came to a large group of peasants looking as desperate as the refugees that had come from Earl's Castle back then. Philip stopped to talk to the peasants, and so did I. Of course he couldn't pass by people in need of help. Not even when he was on his way to try and save Kingsbridge from another attack by the Hamleys. Two of the peasants broke into tears and begged for food. Philip was mortified as they grabbed the hem of his robe and pleaded for mercy. They said they were from Wigley. They had illegally erected a mill and hadn't paid taxes to the Earl of Shiring for grinding flour. I bit my lip when they mentioned the title that used to belong to my father. As punishment, the Earl had destroyed their mill. Philip seemed unsure what to say about Percy Hamley's punishment for these peasants. I was less hesitant. I asked why they'd built an illegal mill. The peasants told us that milling taxes had doubled in their village. The peasants shouted and cried that the Earl had also burnt their fields, destroyed their houses, and taken their livestock from them. A few of them had even been killed. Philip told them to go to Kingsbridge for food. As we rode on, he said nothing. Maybe he had begun to lose hope that he would ever solve his problems with the Earl in Shiring. I had never trusted the Hamleys, but it seemed I had grown careless over the years. They had thus far kept their word to King Stephen, but now I felt I should have known that they would eventually break it. As I was thinking these grim thoughts, we passed by a gallows with two men dangling by their necks. An old woman stood by one of the corpses and snarled at us. The old woman looked at us like a cornered animal. Philip demanded to know what had happened. She cackled and shook her head. She continued looking through the dead men's clothes. She'd already taken off their shoes and found a couple of coins on one of the corpses. Only now I realised that someone had tied foxtails to the corpses. Their hands had been cut off and their faces were burnt. I asked with a stern voice what had happened to the men. The old woman cackled and said that they had played with fire. When Philip asked that she should, by God, answer my question, she became serious. She told him that these men were poachers caught by the Earl's men hunting in his forests. Philip rode on, and when I caught up with him, I could see that now, more than ever, he was determined to talk to Percy Hamley. Aliena rode by my side without knowing that I had long been responsible for her family's fate, ever since I had made the mistake of trusting Waleran by God. I felt like a fly in a cobweb. Every move I made seemed to lead to further calamities. But then I heard Aliena as she sped past me. Shiring, she exclaimed. <laughs> 